Last year, it seemed like Intel were on a bit of a roll and they were doing quite well in the DGPU market. That's this little D stands for discrete. So in other words, the big graphics card going in your desktop GPU. And that's what we all love here at Tech yeah City. And what we've got right here is Intel effectively last year, they had around 4% of the market share. That means for every 100 GPUs that were being sold, four of them were Intel Arc GPUs. But then that went down to 1%, so almost 1 in 100. And now with the recent news, it's gone down to effectively zero. So these numbers come out from a group called JPR, John Petty Research, and we're analyzing them here, and they did seem quite shocking at first, where essentially Intel's just not selling anything on the DGPU market, but also pointed towards NVIDIA, going up to one of the highest points in history, being at 88%, and then AMD dropping off from 19% down to 12%. And so I had to cross-reference this with what I'm seeing on the market, also with what we saw in the NVIDIA quarterly release, which got released after AMD and Intel, where AMD, we did this in a recent video, we covered this, AMD looked like it was a big indicator of what's going on in the market, and that's just a huge downturn. But when we looked at NVIDIA's results, and it didn't quite seem that bad of a downturn, and NVIDIA's results would indicate that indeed, these numbers coming out from JPR are quite accurate. So exactly what is happening in the market right now, and will Intel's battle mage be the savior that Intel needs, where we did get some interesting information coming out of Computex, which I'll share with you guys today, so let's get right into it after today's video sponsor. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and let's get into these results first. The quarterly results from Intel showing that the market share has effectively dropped down to zero. Now, when we cross-reference this with, say, sales numbers from Japan's Kakaku.com, which shows what's the highest ranking sales on DGPUs, it shows that Intel Arc are not even in the top 100, which this is pretty much scaled in a different way to just a linear scale, right? You don't know how well number one's doing in comparison to the uh, number 100, for example. So it indicates that these numbers are indeed showing that Intel Arc GPUs are selling horrendously bad. Furthermore, when I talk to retailers in Australia, some of them don't even stock Intel Arc cards because they just don't sell. And so that is an indicator that I do believe JPR's numbers are quite accurate in relation to Intel's market share effectively being zero. But then we look at AMD's numbers and these numbers look accurate as well. When we looked at AMD's quarterly results, they were doing really bad in terms of their gaming segment. And then we've got the recent results, which just came out from NVIDIA before Computex. So I didn't have time to properly break them down, but it shows here that NVIDIA is down only 8% quarter over quarter, which is much better than AMD's 33% quarter over quarter. And over the year, NVIDIA is up 18% year on year sales on their gaming division, as opposed to AMD being down 48%. Now, of course, a lot of that may have to do with just say console gamers getting fed up with consoles where Sony's not really giving them much of a reason to stay on console anymore and coming over to PC. But those numbers are numbers that we could perhaps break a little bit more down in depth on a live stream. If you guys wanna see that, do let us know in the comments. Love reading those comments as always. So what we're seeing here is effectively Nvidia being dominant and more dominant than they've ever been in history. So what's the reason for this? Why are people just going over to NVIDIA? Is it because they're brainwashed like a lot of other tech tubers will have you believe? Is it because they are just seeing the green and they are just going, yep, everything in life that's green is better. NVIDIA, money, and garlic. Green tea, sorry, that's, that's definitely what I was looking for. Though jokes aside, what's really going on here is people are choosing to buy NVIDIA more than they ever have when they're buying a new graphics card. And for me personally, I think the reasons being the most important reason is the efficiency. I think NVIDIA have the power efficiency advantage right now, especially out of the box. And depending on where you are in the world, power is actually getting really expensive. And so NVIDIA hold that efficiency advantage as well as holding the better advantage on having the software implementation plus the flare works that they've got included. I think 
FPS isn't everything when it comes to even just gaming, but AMD are still selling well versus even Intel, where their market share is fluctuating, but Intel's has effectively gone down to zero. And we've made two videos now on the Intel Arc GPUs. Last year, when I first got these cards, I thought they were just not fit for sale. But in a recent video where we covered the GPUs, I thought they had improved on a lot of things, but I still would have picked an AMD GPU if I was looking for raw price performance, especially for gaming. I think right now, a lot of people in the comments, especially the feedback I'm getting is that you should go with an Intel GPU really just to extract the encoding features and the decoding features, especially when it comes to AV1 and using it more in custom systems where you know what you're doing. In other words, if you're just gaming, perhaps look for something else. So although Intel are really in a world of pain right now with these DGPUs, we did get something out of Computex. Even though it wasn't a direct battle mage announcement, we did get a couple of pieces of news that were very important. The first being the news that I heard on the floor. As you guys know, I do like to uh, go around and boogie a little bit wherever I am. And it was at one particular party that I found myself talking to some higher ups in a particular company. And I won't name which company this was, but they were pretty, uh, I think they weren't in, say, a sober state of mind, and they let something slip. And they were saying, yes, the coolers, we're getting the coolers ready for Battle Mage at this point in time. <laughs> so the other guy next to him looked at him and was like, you shouldn't have said that. And I just, they didn't know who I was. They didn't know that I made YouTube videos. And so it was all pretty much flushed over after that. But I got that information. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure my viewers would want to know that Battle Mage is coming and they want to know that the coolers are getting prepared right now, which means that I do believe we will see Battle Mage being released at the end of this year before Christmas, being a very popular sales season. But also there's Intel's innovation note, which is coming out later in the year sometime in September. And that's when I believe they'll announce Battle Mage as well as also give us more details about Arrow Lake, their upcoming CPU architecture, which both of these architectures were really non-existent in terms of details in their keynote. But what we did get was an XE2 sort of detail in the form of Lunar Lake, which is a GPU tile portion, which is going to be used for say upcoming laptops as well as even possibly handhelds. And here was where we got some really juicy information where the performance increase of this XE2, that's gonna be essentially the same architecture used in Battle Nage, where we're looking at a performance uplift of roughly 1.5X. In other words, a 50% performance increase. However, what was lacking in this detail was any TDP figures, the wattage improvements, but we did get some direct examples of how certain configurations and instruction sets can perform massively over their previous counterpart on the Meteor Lake, for example, where then one particular example, which is a draw X instruction set, there was a 12.5X or 1250% a percent increase and this is often used in the unreal engine 5 for example and also another big improvement was vvc encoding aka h266 which should make its way into battle mage 2 which if anything that's also another really good reason why you may wish to buy a battle mage gpu if it's got these new features at the right price it could really be a big win for intel but i'm hoping as well they correct all the mistakes that were previously and even still there on the Arc GPUs and things like not being able to undervolt, not having the ability just to quickly flick the switch and turn on capture card ability and not have to jump through any hurdles there, having quick desktop hotkeys and things like that available for capture. Things that I'm used to with the Nvidia suite of software, just copy paste that stuff, make your product great from the get go. And guys like me are gonna go, hmm, maybe you wanna try Battle Mage. And if the value's there too, then I could see Intel clawing their way back from 0%, which kind of reminds me of that Titanic scene where it's like, you got nothing to lose. When you got nothing, you got nothing to lose. It's kind of weird though, with the sales being near 0%, there's really no reason to delay it. it. Should just give us an early picture and get people hyped and it might do the opposite. Where if we look at Nvidia, for example, or AMD, they got a reason to really not talk about their new architectures too early because it could affect their sales. But a 0%, yeah, I don't know. Intel, just, just announce Battle Mage as soon as possible, please. We're all, we all want to get excited. Though in quarter one of this year, NVIDIA stated that they were down 8% on their sales quarter over quarter. Though if we look at the JPR quarter over quarter results here, they're saying that shipments were down 14.8%. And when we look at that versus NVIDIA's minus 8%, and then we look at that versus AMD's uh, sequential 33% down, and Intel, which really gave us nothing in their 
uh, earnings results. We just I couldn't decipher any results from that. It was just really a chicanery of uh, magic. We're seeing here that the market shifted towards NVIDIA. Even though the sales were down on NVIDIA's side quarter over quarter, the total sales on the industry were down 14.8%. And in other words, NVIDIA had sucked up more of the market share from the other two and then taken away from their sales even more, which is why their quarters were looking much worse for the gaming related products than NVIDIA's was. So at this point in time, Battle Mage really needs to be Intel's Hail Mary if you guys want to see a third competitor in the marketplace. Though for me personally, I'm not gonna be giving Intel my business and I'm not gonna recommend people go out and buy an Intel card if it isn't up to par. I'm not giving them the sale for woe is me, oh poor me. They're a multi-billion dollar corporation. They don't really need any help. They need to get the right decisions in the right places at the right time and give us the best products possible and show that they can be a market leader if they want the sales. And when I look at ARC cards, things that I believe could be simple fixes for their team and they haven't fixed them one year later, does show me that I should be very cautious and instead of being on the hype train, I should actually be on the more cautious train, the one that's slamming on the brakes and going, hey, let's wait and see here what Intel has to offer and really thoroughly review it, take it through at least a two week crash course and game on it and see if it's up to par before recommending it. Because in the world of business, despite the circle jerking that you may see in YouTube comment sections and how Intel's so great and their Arc GPUs are amazing, when it comes down to the real world, there is no participation awards. Though lastly, you may be wondering about AMD, what they've got to offer. In terms of RDNA 4, I really didn't hear a whole lot, except RX 7900 XTXs are apparently being halted in terms of production. So that's something I've got to follow up on more, get you guys a story on, and perhaps we could see RDNA 4 as well being released before Christmas this year. I do hope so, and I do hope AMD continue to improve on their products as well, because... I really liked the size of the RX 7900 XTX when I put it in my mini ITX PC. It was just a shame that it just failed to be as good as RTX Studio, for example. So hopefully the next time I try AMD in my PC, it remains in there for good. But yeah, at this point in time, I went to Computex, for instance, and all that content you guys saw during that time, I edited that with zero hiccups. There was zero problems on the 4070 Ti 10850K system, the i9 from 10th gen. That thing did not miss a beat, man. It was just that good. Anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comments section below, are you looking forward to Battle Mage and also Arrow Lake? For me personally, I'm really looking forward to Arrow Lake because it is an overhaul of Intel CPUs. So we're going away with Hypers threading. We're going to see what IPC they've got to bring to the table. It's actually one of the most exciting things I'm looking forward to this year, except we really didn't get that much detail about the actual desktop specific parts. And so I'm hoping news on that comes out. And all we got was the motherboards and everyone was going crazy over this Cam 2. And for me personally, I looked at the Cam 2 stuff and I was like, well, the only motherboards this is coming on are like the flagship boards, the really expensive ones. For instance, ASRock had the OC Formula Tai Chi. That's going to cost a lot of money. And then the RAM itself is going to cost a lot of money. I just don't see the value there at all in Cam 2. So <laughs> there was that. And people were getting excited about that. I'm like, no, let's just see what the CPU has to offer. And I'm really looking forward to seeing, say, for instance, what the Ultra 5 has. And if that's going to bring the best sort of price performance to the gamers as well as giving the best experience in terms of 0.1% lows, as well as being good for online play too. So there's lots to be excited about. It's just that we really didn't get a whole lot of detail at Computex, which is what I was really disappointed about. But regardless, do let us know what you think of Intel's current situation, what they need to turn things around. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.